Hey everybody, um, I wanted to uh, shoot a quick video for you um, since we're not going to be able to hold class today. Um, we are, uh, we were taking a look yesterday towards the end of class at uh, finding uh, the zeros of a polynomial uh, when you have uh, not so nice looking uh, roots. Um, so I wanted to do a follow-up video with this today. Um, so we have to do some investigative work and a great place to start with your investigative work is uh, to graph the polynomial which I'm going to do right now over here in Desmos. Uh, we can look at the roots in Desmos. We see we have one nice root and two ugly roots. So you would expect three roots, since this is a cubic, and this, uh, this question sets up well for our next topic when we talk about complex roots. So we have one nice looking root, we have two ugly roots that we're going to need to do some investigative work. Uh, I want to point out, it says you need to enter exact values here, not just uh, decimal approximations. So there's uh, strengths and weaknesses to uh, software like Desmos. Uh, it can provide nice decimal approximations, uh, which can be helpful, but it's not going to get us to our final destination. So we need to do some investigative work to figure out these other two roots. So if uh, x equals negative 4, x plus 4 must have been a factor. So we're going to take x plus 4 and we're going to do long division. So how many times does x go into x cubed? That would be x squared times. That should be cubed right there. You want to be very careful with your signs here. Remember, you're expecting to not get a remainder. If x plus 4 is a factor, there should be no remainder here. All right, let's multiply by 2x up here. I have not used this writing pad. I'm using a different writing pad than normal not use this writing pad in a while. My handwriting feels a little different. All right. And you can see down here that you're going to get a remainder of zero. So the factored form of this polynomial should be x plus 4 and x squared plus 2x minus 1. Uh, this is a multi-step question, so I do like to pause at points and uh, do a sanity check, make sure that we're on track. Uh, the fact that we did not get a remainder is a good sign that we are on track with this question. I'm also going to back, I'm going to graph the factored form and make sure the graph of the factored form matches what I started with. So we have factored correctly. You can see the blue is equivalent to the red over here in Desmos. So we are on the right track. Uh, let's do some investigative work for this quadratic. Um, I haven't talked about the cubic equation. Uh, I could have used the cubic equation here. Maybe, well, I'll let me show you the cubic equation. Um, and let me show that over here. Oh, that's not showing up like I want to. Uh, this is the cubic equation right here. So you have an A, which would be 1 in this case, a B, which would be 6, a C, which would be 7, and a D value, which would be negative 4. So uh, this is a bit labor intensive. Um, and then an interesting uh, 
theorem in mathematics is that there's a closed form for uh, linear functions. Linear functions are pretty easy to evaluate. There's a closed form for, uh, I say functions, equations. There's a closed form for quadratic equations, the quadratic formula, which we're about to use. Uh, there's a closed form for cubic equations. Uh, it's a bit labor intensive. Uh, but after the uh, after a cubic equation, there is no closed form. So if we go to a fourth order, fifth order, sixth order polynomial, there's no closed form formula that we can use. We have to do investigative work like what we're doing right here. Okay, so we have x squared plus 2x minus 1. Let's do some investigative work with that. I could try to factor here. Uh, nothing will multiply to give me negative 1. That adds to give me 2. This guy will not factor. So we're going to need to pull out the quadratic formula here. So negative b, negative b, plus or minus square root, plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac over 2a over 2a. So we got negative 2 plus or minus the square root, let's say uh, 4 plus 4 underneath the square root over 2. So 2 squared, not my best handwriting, is 4. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 is 4. Uh, I'm not used to this pen. Let's see if we can clean up this stuff underneath the uh, square root just a little bit so I can make it a little clearer. Okay, so we got 2 squared, b squared minus 4ac. That's a negative 1 right there. Let's see if I can make my negative 1 look a little bit better. b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, all right. We can roll with that. Okay, let's uh, simplify this guy a little bit. So uh, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. Uh, let's work with the square root of 8 just a little bit. I'm going to do a factor tree. And when you have a tree, you pick pairs. So I can make this 2 square root of 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 gives me 8. Oops, I'm writing it wrong. And then we can factor out a 2 on top. All this stuff equals 8 here. Uh, and I might be running out of space. I think we can make this work. So let's uh, factor out a 2 left with negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 all over 2. And then I have a 2 on the top and the bottom. That will reduce. So I'm left with negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. Let's check that. Uh, a couple different ways we could check it. We could just take a look at the decimal approxim approximation. And we see that the decimal approximations uh, match the decimal approximations we're seeing in Desmos. Uh, we could also plot these as ordered pairs. You change this one to a plus. Uh, and then, you know, for the sake of completion, I can also plot the nice root. Uh, negative 4, 0. So you can see uh, the three zeros, three roots look really good. All right, so uh, you got several questions that look like this uh, in the 
homework for section 3.5, real zeros of polynomials. Uh, you will also see a lot of questions that look like this in the next section, uh, section 3.6, complex zeros. Uh, we will talk about complex zeros this coming Monday in class. All right, reach out if there's anything I can do to help. I will see everybody soon.